Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Garrett and I'm a librarian at Evanston Public Library. This is the last in a series of four tutorials introducing digital newspaper resources available through your public library, either on site or using your library card from the comfort of your own home. Today, we're going to take a look at a number of important newspaper archives beyond Evanston's public library. We will be focusing on resources that are free, though we will also mention several in passing that require personal subscriptions, and they do cost money. Before we get started, though, first a reminder that a majority of your online newspaper needs can be taken care of without venturing out into the wild and woolly west of the World Wide Web. In our first three tutorials, we showed you how to get the most out of newspaper databases we subscribe to at EPL, especially ProQuest's Global News Stream and the historical archives of the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Defender, and the New York Times. So if you haven't done so before, follow the steps here to see a list with links to EPL's digital newspaper resources. To review these steps and try them out yourself, pause this tutorial now go to epl.org and explore away. You won't regret it. You'll also see that there are links to our three earlier tutorials available in both English and Spanish. But today's focus is on everything else out there, especially the free stuff. You don't need to memorize this list. We will go through each of these seven resource sites one at a time, starting with the Chronicling America Project from the Library of Congress. Chronicling America has benefited from being associated with the largest library in the world, the Library of Congress, and from major funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities. The technology behind it is state-of-the-art and it is being added to constantly. As of mid-2020, it has digitized over 3,000 historical newspapers with over 16 million newspaper pages. But it actually has two parts. There is the fully searchable database of the text of these newspapers, allowing you to conduct a search for a particular date range or state of the union across all of the newspapers you want to focus on. But there is also a second part, the US newspaper directory, which gives you catalog information on close to 6,000 American newspapers going all the way back to 1690. You can search this directory by state and even down to the level of towns or cities. For Evanston, for example, you can get publication information for 26 different newspapers. Here's a sample search in the newspaper database. Let's say you are interested in the Civil War era case involving the Confederate raider, the CSS Alabama, that devastated northern shipping in the North Atlantic. After the Civil War, the United States sued Great Britain for damages and won. Searching for Alabama claims between 1860 and 1875 turns up over 12,000 mentions. That's too many, of course, so probably it's best to sort your results by relevance, which is what we've done here. At the top of this list is this extensive article from the New York Herald, dated July 28, 1872. Good job. Here's an example of a search of all digitized newspapers by state. It covers also very short-lived publications, like the Chicago Daily Press and Tribune that only existed between January 1st and March 16th, 1859. But all 62 issues are available to you, both in facsimile and in searchable full text. The U.S. newspaper directory, by contrast, doesn't care a bit whether a newspaper has been digitized or not. If it existed, even for just a few issues, like here the Evanston Newsette, you should find it listed and described here in detail. Next, let's look at the Google News Archive another remarkable free resource. This project goes back to 2006 and was intended to supplement Google News. Google bought up an archiving service and then began adding its own scans to the database 
by around 2010 reaching 2,000 titles, though with huge gaps. You might say Google News Archive was the newspaper equivalent of Google Books, which has scanned the contents of over 10 million books. But the project was suddenly ended in 2011, probably because Google didn't see how it could be made profitable. Lucky for us, however, they left the database up and you can use it still today free of charge. There's really little rhyme and reason to what's in the database and what isn't. Here you can see an awful lot of titles from Francophone Canada, for example, and searching this database isn't easy. It's best to start with this index. Each title is linked to the archive itself. One of these titles plays a notable role in a search we did it's the Afro-American, which is in the Google News Archive, with some major gaps, from 1902 to 1992. So, we were working on the history of African-American journalists. We encountered the name of James Hicks, and we wanted to know more about him. We searched for his name and discovered that for many years he was a war reporter for the Afro-American in Baltimore. We find stories he wrote and also this report about him on how he was alleged to have died in a military plane crash. Actually, as it turns out, he didn't die and in fact went on to have a legendary career over the next 30 years covering the painful school integration in Little Rock, Arkansas and Oxford, Mississippi, as well as the Emmett Till trial in Sumner, Mississippi. He lived until 1986. Another major source of information on digitized newspaper archives, this time from around the world, is Wikipedia's list of online newspaper archives, which is one of the few sources we will talk about that provide information on archives of the immediate past up to, well, actually yesterday's paper in a number of cases, and we'll, we will look at those. Just follow the link to any country and you will get a list of available newspapers. The Wikipedia list is particularly strong for the US and Canada, but also for Mexico. Here's a link to the online archive of El Universal, one of Mexico's most important newspapers, searchable back to 1999. The state of Illinois has its own digitization project for newspapers that goes beyond chronicling America from the Library of Congress. It's a project actually of the University of Illinois and is supported by public donations and crowdsourced text correction, uh, which by the way, you can volunteer for if you'd like to help, help out with this project. Here you see a clickable map of Illinois by county. So let's say you're interested in the history of meatpacking in Chicago. The Tribune Archive may not be as much help to you as much smaller newspapers that were printed specifically for people in what used to be a vast industry, but today has moved well further west. I think we will find something here, for example, in the Chicago Packer or Chicago Livestock World, both from the early 20th century. It might also help to search in newspapers in immigrant languages. Those are available too, but um, our search terms would also have to be in those languages. Uh, but just for the heck of it, let's search for the word in English, hogs. Wow, hogs occurs in 1,211 articles alone in the Chicago Packer. Even in these snippets, we learn interesting things, for example, that pigs really love pecans. Time to look across the border at a Mexican project comparable to the Library of Congress's Chronicling America. The Hemeroteca Nacional Digital of Mexico is broken down regionally so you can click on a particular state on a map and see which archives are available. For example, Chihuahua in the north has six newspaper archives. Jalisco, by contrast, has 30. As in Chronicling America, some print runs are very, very brief, like the one shown here, which I will not attempt to pronounce. 
Uh, it lasted only from March until June 1897. So many are like this, so be forewarned. Actually, for much broader coverage of Mexico and the rest of the Americas, including the Caribbean, we recommend returning to the Wikipedia list of online newspapers. The Emeroteca is listed there, but so are many other sources, as we saw earlier. Our sixth free resource for newspapers is very, very local indeed. It's the fabulous library of Northwestern University. You have access, provided you are an Evanston resident. Just go to the entrance and provide proof of an Evanston address and you can get a day pass. As long as you are in the building, you have the same access and privileges as any Northwestern student or professor. An especially valuable resource for those interested in Evanston history is the completely digitized Daily Northwestern going back 150 years. Here's the result of a library search for the phrase Evanston Free Public Library, an article from April 1897. The Daily Northwestern has also covered Evanston politics, crime, and social issues from the very beginning. And it's all keyword searchable, just not remotely, only from within the confines of the library building on the Northwestern campus. Finally, we just want to point to one of many smaller digital newspaper publishers out there. This one is called Small Town Papers. It has about 250 small town newspapers digitized, some going up to the very present. Access for the public is free. The company makes its money by charging the paper publishers. So if you'd like to see how Evanston's former city manager, Wally Bobkowitz, is doing in his new assignment in Issaquah, Washington, you can do that by going to smalltownpapers.com. In light of all the digitizing going on, you'd think that one of Illinois' most important local newspapers, the Evanston Review, would be available digitally somewhere. For example, from the Library of Congress or the digitization project of the University of Illinois. But, sorry, it isn't. Only yellowing and crumbling paper versions exist and microfilm. Someone really needs to fix this. Maybe it could be you if you are nice and wealthy. We also want to take note of the very important commercial publishers of digitized newspaper content, especially newspapers.com and genealogybank.com. These are huge databases that usually have very sophisticated search and download capabilities, but they cost you, the end user, money. There are literally dozens or even hundreds of newspaper databases that have been created by ProQuest and other large digital publishers many of these available at research libraries such as Northwestern. We at Evanston Public Library can help you gain access to these tools or we can show you free alternatives. So this concludes our series of four tutorials on getting the most out of your library's digital newspapers. At this point, the best strategy for you we can recommend is to fire up your own computer or use one of ours and experiment with the resources we presented. If you hit a wall somewhere, don't despair. You can always contact us at Evanston Public Library. We'll be happy to work with you and help you become an expert at newspapers online. Thank you again.